Most people download Zillow or Redfin or Realtor.com app, whatever app you're using, you start looking at houses and you get really pumped up because you start finding really nice houses with photos. But how do you know if that house with really nice photos in the backyard that you've been dreaming about is not an actual money pit? Or how do you know you're just gonna end up regretting that decision for the rest of your life? In today's video, I'm gonna show you three houses you absolutely should avoid if you're thinking about your first house, your investment, or whatever. So in this case, let's, let's, let's just pretend here. Let's pretend you and I are buying a house together. So basically, it's getting pretty serious between us. Now, the first thing you might want to do is just, you know, let's say in this example, we're looking for something under 450 in the random city of Goodyear. Um, it's near where I live, so we're going to use this as an example. And we just start looking at the photos and we start saying, oh, wow, these photos look nice. And your brain might actually want to go and start looking at the ones with photos, like with the nicer photos, I should say. I'm gonna have to stop you there. Listen, I know our relationship is getting serious, but let's take a step back here and let's really identify what it means when a listing has nicer photos. When a listing has nicer photos, all that really means is that the realtor paid more money for nicer photos. That's it. It doesn't mean the house is nicer. It doesn't mean the house is worth more. Or it's more valuable. That's all it is. They paid more for that. So if we look at it that way, then we won't let the nicer photos really affect our judgment that much, or at least we shouldn't. So let's not look at the nicer photos. Let's, let's take a step back and let's, let's, let's do some things here. Okay. So first things first, number one is going to be, let's avoid the new listings. Why would we do that? Well, when we're looking online, you, you'll see the new listings, like the, the ones that say new listings pop out at you. And if you're looking on Zillow or Realtor, they make it like bright green, like you like to catch your attention. But here's the reality of the situation. Like in life, whenever something's shiny and new, we like to go after that. Let's not do that. Let's take a step back here. Let me show you guys something called the Dunning-Kruger effect. The Dunning-Kruger effect occurs when a person's lack of knowledge and skills in a certain area cause them to overestimate their own competence. So basically this means when someone doesn't have a lot of knowledge in something, they tend to have higher confidence with that certain subject. And this definitely happens with real estate. Let me show you an example. When a house is listed, that seller's confidence is surprisingly high. They may not have a lot of knowledge about buying or selling houses or the real estate market in general, but they have an extraordinary amount of confidence and hope. So if you want to try to make an offer when confidence is an all time high or they're just hoping and they know that they priced their house or their house is special and unique, there's going to be a less chance you're going to get your offer accepted. And as time progresses, that confidence will decrease as the more knowledge they receive about that market. And our goal is to try to strike right here, right? Because eventually they're gonna get to the point where their confidence will rise because they have a lot of knowledge about the area. We want to strike when things are unsure. Now, it's a little different with actual real estate. So like the way I like to describe it to people is negotiability, meaning the ability to negotiate somebody down on the price. When a seller, DOM means days on market. When a seller has zero or a few days on market, their negotiability is low. Their ability to negotiate is low because they have a lot of confidence or they have a lot of hope. So if you try to give them a low ball offer, they're gonna just going to be like, ah, you know, we're just going to wait for the, for things to change. We're going to, we're going to hope for that offer, the better offer to come because in their head, that over list price cash offer is just coming next weekend. But the more days on market that happen, the higher their negotiability gets. Now there's going to be some exceptions to this rule, which we'll definitely talk about because that's going to be a second topic as well for this video, but you really want to make sure to avoid the new listing. So here's a general rule for you guys to follow. I recommend you guys only look at listings that are seven days on the market or more. Once again, we're talking about getting a deal. If you don't really care about getting a good deal, you just want to go buy a house that you like and love, go look at new listings. That's totally fine. I'm look, talking to the people that are trying to save as much money because remember, the goal is to buy a house as under list price as possible. We want to buy it under market value because the lower market value we get at home, the higher protection we get from any market shifts or down the road when it's time to refinance, you're going to be put in a much better position. So avoid the shiny object. Try the seven day rule if you're looking to get a good deal. And if you have to go look at that new listing, just know 
you don't have as much leverage as you think. The house is brand new. You're probably going to have to offer list price or a little more to get it, but it's just the name of the game. I do want to give you guys an exception to the rule. If there is a new listing with bad photos, you should go check it out because for some reason they hired a bad agent or they are just in a hurry that they didn't even want to really like market it correctly, whatever the case is. I've gotten some pretty good deals throughout my life just by looking at ugly, ugly photo houses because the photos do not indicate what the house really looks like. And for some reason they rush that process. So you should go take advantage of that. So I just want to give you guys that caveat. The second type of a house you should avoid is a house that has been on the market for a while, but has not done any price changes. Now this may seem like it's working backward. Like what you, you told me not to find a house that's new. I found one that hasn't, it's been on the market for a while. And now you're telling me to avoid it. Well, not necessarily. What I'm telling you to do is be careful because what happens is if there hasn't been a price change in over 30, 60, 90 days, it's still the same list price. It could mean a few things for you. It could mean the seller's stubborn, the seller's overconfident, but the worst case scenario that I always try to avoid is the seller has nothing to lose. Whenever a seller tells me, oh, you know, I, I could just rent this house. I don't care if I end up selling this. And I, if I don't get the price I want, I'm just gonna go rent it to some, you know, I don't need to sell this house. To a buyer, that's one of the worst things. If they actually do mean it, it sucks because here's why. Let's say you're buying a house for $450,000 and the appraisal comes in at 400. Normally in a situation like that, you can negotiate with the seller and you can try to see if you can find a middle ground or have them reduce the price. Well, if the seller's like, if we don't get 450, I'm just not going to sell. I'm just going to go rent. It's like, they're not willing to work with you. Like, well, if you don't want to sell your house, then why is it listed? Just maybe not just completely avoid them, but just know you're, you're not going to find gold. If you find a situation like that, let me kind of uh, see if I can find one here and show an example of that. Here I set up a special view where we can see the original list price versus the list price versus the days on market. So let's set up an ascending or sorry, descending days on market. So we find one that has a high days on market, but like a pretty like not substantial change here. Here's an example of that. So this house has been on the market for 72 days and they were originally listed at 422. And this is even worse that not only have they not decreased the price, but they actually increased it by a thousand dollars. Now, this to me is screaming overpriced, like crazy overpriced. And more importantly, it's, it's screaming to me that they're not willing to work with us. So if I go and make them a lowball offer, odds are is they probably won't work with me. Now, of course, there could be exceptions to the rule like there always is, but I am not going to be super excited to see something like this because it's like, well, why haven't you reduced the price? That really doesn't make sense. Now, what we want to see is we want to see someone who's actually proactive. Like here, for example, we can see some that this one was originally listed at 470 and they're now listed at 444 and it's been on the market for 107 days. Your agent, or maybe you can on Zillow or whatever app you're using, you can see the history and you can see the price changes they've had here. looks like they've been reducing it every two to four weeks which shows that they're actually like realistic and they're keeping track with the market and they they're experimenting with prices and then it's not working. So they're reducing. So this will be a better situation for you to really try and get a better deal for the house. Better deal, of course, meaning lower list price as the goal. And the last house you should try to avoid for sure is two type of houses. Actually, you should avoid over remodeled houses or cheaply remodeled houses. Now this one, you might need an eye to kind of really get an idea, but Hey, you're buying a house with me and our relationship is pretty serious. So I got your back. I know what to look out for. Now, if you're really good, you might be able to look at the photos and, and see if you can determine uh, if it's going to be a situation like that. But if you're not good there, don't worry, you will eventually get there. So first up is over remodeled houses. Why do we want to avoid these? Well, here's the thing. Okay. If a house is over remodeled, they're probably asking for top dollar and you never, ever, ever want to buy the most expensive house in the neighborhood. This is pretty common stuff here. Like when you are in the business of trying to get the house as cheap as possible, the most to get yourself in the most affordable position or a better position in the future, it just doesn't make sense to put yourself in that position. You don't want to be the top marker. You want to be, you want neighbors to hit you because you bought your house too cheap. And now everybody's values went down because of your house. Like that's the kind of goal you're trying to accomplish and over remodeled houses. They have two things. Okay. They have a situation where a, 
the seller spent too much money on the house. They overdid it, and maybe because they thought that they're, you know they're first time fix and flippers, and they thought they needed to go completely all out, and they are over budget. And so because of that, they put too much money in their house, and now they are in a position where they have to ask for more. So this could work in our favor, and we can try and say, hey, let's give them a low ball offer because of that. But most of the time, unless it's like a hard money situation, that seller is going to be like stubborn because it's, it's a company and they're they're going to try to hold on to try to get as much money as possible because they're not looking at you as like oh the, the future person who's going to take care of my house instead they're looking at you like okay i need there's a number that i need and you're going to meet that number or it won't work out now we usually don't see this like in suburban areas we usually see these like in the older areas or like really popular areas so i did have to kind of go out a little bit to find this but i found this house here which i won't show you the address to I did see it was owned by a real estate agent and it was uh, bought as an investment recently. So like, yeah, they bought this house. They, you know, put the nicest countertops and nicest floorings and just completely went all out. But the problem is now it's been over a hundred days on the market and they haven't been able to sell it. It looks like it was currently about what, 112 days on the market. And it's actually funny enough, uh, you remember I told you my last tip, uh, they haven't reduced the price in 120 days. So it kind of just kind of goes with that, right? So when the house is over remodeled, the ability to negotiate them goes less. But the second thing, which is the cheaply remodeled, that's probably not something you're gonna see until you actually walk the house. But a lot of times you see these with the big uh, companies that are like like the open door companies kind of where they do just a very half-assed remodel and they just barely do enough. Or you sometimes you'll see like the countertops who are for mica, but they'll just laminate it to to make it look shiny so the photos will make like the kitchen look really nice and shiny but uh carner tops are, are cheap or they'll basically get the cabinets or very basic cabinets and they'll just whitewash it and they'll like look at white with like new hardware so it'll look nice in the photos and it's like really like, ooh, nice but when you actually walk it it's like hey that's kind of cheap the reason why you want to avoid these kind of houses where they do things very cheaply is if they did that cheap what else did they do cheap right like why why not just put a little more time and effort into it it's it's just obvious when they buy something for the point of flipping it and they put like little little to no effort in it like they're just trying to make a quick buck off of you now if they replace the ac replace the roof and did all these things and they have no money left and that's why they barely did anything else and that makes sense right but most of the time they're after the quick buck and they're not going to want to spend major money on ac roof and stuff like that so they're going to do the the cheapest amount possible to just basically pull a rug on you and just like impress you but you're basically going to get yourself in a money trap where when you move in the actual major items of the house will need to get repaired and replaced and get to get stuck with that bill you do you got yourself a half-ass remodeled house with a lot of work to be done so those are the houses you need to avoid to try to get a better deal remember everything has its exceptions so please Whatever the situation is, always have your agent or call the listing agent and get an idea of the scenario. Because at the end of the day, you won't know what the situation is. And you, you can spend all day assuming what it is, but it's not until you actually have a live conversation with someone where you're actually going to determine what the situation is and see if it's actually worth your time to make a low offer on it. So best of luck out there. Good luck finding your affordable house. If you happen to have any other tips or anything for any other people, please leave a comment below and I'm sure it'll help people out there. I'll make sure to try to like it so that way it gets uh, promoted up on the comment section. Now, if you're finding yourself in a situation where you're like, hey man, this is great and all, but I can't even afford a house where I live. Check out this video that I made recently where it talks to you about what to do if you're in a position right now where you can't afford a house. So please go watch that, get yourself prepared and get ready because your time will come. Thank you guys. See you in the next one.